Welcome to the seventh of our series looking at Gage. In this particular one we're going to have a look at the notion of a viewport and how it's used within the Gage engine. Viewports it's a fairly sizable topic. Uh, in that sense we're actually going to split this video into two different uh, parts, two halves. Uh, the first half we'll have a look at what viewports are and why they're useful and look at the demo inside the Gage one just to see how they can be used. In the second part we'll, we'll, we'll look at input uh, is, is a, how we get input in through a viewport and then also some of the algorithms around clipping that are used for drawing things out. But first of all we will uh, provide a little bit of context uh, around this by way of scene setting. Um, so Here's our main, um, uh, well, it's one of the screens we've seen from last time, is off the main game one. We've got a screen manager. It contains a number of game screens. Game screens hold viewports, uh, a layer viewport and a screen viewport. So, so we want to, to, to look at that piece of functionality. Viewports, they're tied into, in essence, how we draw things out, how we make things visible. Um, so it also, some of the classes we'll look at will be tying into the drawing classes as well. So it tries into graphics helper and there'll also be a viewport helper we'll look at too. In terms of viewports, there's two reasons why they're useful or two reasons why we need them. The first of those reasons are the viewports can provide us with a window into a larger game world. And what you can see on the screen here is it's just an illustration of, of a, a complete level, a big level that you would never ever display all at once on the screen. Rather, you would have a certain portion of that that's visible to the player. And as the player moves through the world, you would change the bit of the world that they would see. Um, now, the previous talk we had a look at game containers you could have different levels or different screens where they transition from one screen to another but here for a viewport we're imagining that the whole world in its glorious big size is available but we have this notion of a window a portion of it that we see at any point in time um, so if viewport determines the region of your game world that, that, that's visible on the screen um, so an example you can see here is that we could have a tile based system the tiles could be defined over a larger area and inside the red box notionally that's our window into it and, and whatever we whatever game objects fall within that red box are the things that we render to the screen. Uh, the other ones exist and stored about in memory but they would not be made visible at this point in time. Um, so notionally related to this then if, if, if we have this concept of a window into a world it assumes that or game world somehow has its coordinate system. It has uh, locations, 2D, X and Y. It has a width and a height. Um, now, th these are abstract things because we're just virtually defining this and it'll differ depending upon the particular world that you are, you are doing. Um, what we can see here on the screen just assumes that we have some uh, level width and level height. It's gonna be bigger than our viewport. That would be fairly common. Now locations within this you'll have to define a zero zero location normally uh, and certainly within gauge we assume a zero zero location seems the the confusing coordinate system it's, it's in the bottom left hand corner of things um, so we normally would start with zero zero over in the bottom left positive x takes us out to the right positive y takes us notionally up the screen when we're thinking about the viewport then, it will have a position somewhere within the world. It's where that viewport is located within the world. It'll have a width and it'll have a height that determines how much you see. And when we're drawing things out then, we need to have an algorithm that can say, okay, let me work out which of my game objects are visible within my viewport, either fully or partially, and I will then draw those things out uh, to the screen. And if we think about the screen, it too has an origin. Normally zero, zero and from a screen is in the top left-hand corner. Uh, it'll have a pixel width in terms of number of pixels across, and number of pixels down the, the pixel height. And that's what we're drawing our world onto. So there's a bit of mapping, if you like, from one space or game world onto another space, the, the screen. Um, when we're drawing things out, uh, you can see over here, so this is an image of, of some particular uh, width and height in a viewport. 
um, and we're highlighting an object inside this here, the, the platform, uh, sort of the green top. If any bit of the, 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 the image is visible, so that's our indication or uh, cue that we want to draw it out. And this alludes to the fact that in some cases, as we can see here, the object will be fully visible within the viewport, in which case we draw all of it. Uh, but in other cases, it may only be partially visible, that part of the object is in the viewport and a part of the object is outside of the viewport. That gives us an instance where we want to clip the object to say that we're not going to draw all of it. We will work out a region of it that we want to draw and then draw that region to wherever we want to on the screen. So again, one of the things we're going to have to look at is this notion of clipping, where we truncate the bit uh, that we're going to draw so that it fits precisely within our viewport. Now, the second reason why we want to use viewports actually ties into the fact we're running on a mobile device and there's lots of different mobile devices that we can run on and we need some way of managing this, this, this diversity. So if we think about our, our mobile devices, um, obviously they'll have a pixel density, you can have a, a different number of pixels on the screen, but beyond that they can also have a different aspect ratio. Uh, and you can see up here on, on the slide some of the different common aspect ratios from a, a 4-3 to a 3-2 to a 16-10, 16-9. Uh, and if we're writing a game, potentially the game is, is running on these different devices. Certainly if you have one where you're, you're catering to Android and iOS, then you will be dealing with a range of different aspect ratios. Alongside that, you're also dealing with a range of different pixel densities on the screen. Now, we want to, to ideally to create our game in one particular space and have a way of mapping onto all of these different uh, screens. There's different ways of doing this. Uh, a fairly common uh, technique that can be used and one we'll use within Gage is that if, you, if your default assumption is that it's a 3-2 aspect ratio and you can see over here for this diagram that the, the darker sort of cyan colour in the middle is a 3-2 aspect ratio. Now, if you have a 3-2 aspect ratio on a 3-2 device, it fits perfectly. If you have a 3-2 aspect ratio and you're displaying it on a 4-3 uh, ratio device, then it fits in and you've got bars to the top and bottom of the screen, but it fits inside it. And if you have a 3-2 and you're displaying on a 16-9 or 16-10, which are more typical of Android uh, aspect ratios, then again, the 3-2 fits in with bars on the left and the right. Um, so an assumption we will quite often make, and you'll see this in a number of the, the examples within the code, is that we'll, we'll create by default a 3-2 aspect ratio and we'll position this somewhere on the screen because we know it'll fit within the common aspect ratios that we're um, having to deal with. So there's different ways then of dealing with those bars. So you can see the good bars here to the top, to the bottom, to the left, to the right, depending on the particular aspect ratio. Different ways you can do this. Um, some of them are, are more easier than others, some of them are, are better than others. Um, you can scale it, and you can see that over the example on the left hand side, where you take your 3 2 aspect ratio and you just scale it up or down to the side depending upon the, the screen that you're running. So it stretches out to occupy the full screen. But if you do scale it, generally you're, you're upsetting your aspect ratio that your graphics come in, so things can look stretched. So it's not necessarily ideal even if it is a fairly straightforward approach. Uh, another approach you can see us in the middle is that if we're designing for a 3-2 aspect ratio and we're running on a 16-9, 16-10 or a 4-3 device, we'll just live with the bars that we have to the top or the bottom and, and we'll colour them in some default colour, uh, black, white, whatever you want. Uh, so in that sense, you display your 3-2 and you just live with this unused space uh, on, on the device. Another example, and probably one that is best overall, though it can be a little bit more complex, is you would still design your game to run in a 3-2 aspect ratio, but you'll have um, a bunch of different backgrounds that are available um, for working for 4-3 or 16-9 or 16-10. And, and you would display those backgrounds, uh, if, if you like to occupy all of the screen, um, and, and you can still see your 4-3 regions in that sense, you're sort of extending things out so you, you get to see a bit more of the game. 
that works fine. It looks nice. I suppose the downside of that is that different players then can potentially see different game objects depending on how you have extended your, your viewport. So it's all swings and roundabouts um, in this case. Right, now, we're trying to piece these two things together. The idea of a window into a world and the idea of having lots of different devices that we want to cater to. We're trying to link these things together. This will set out then what functionality we want to have within our code base and we'll see this within the, the demos. So different things we'll have to do. Uh, th th these are step one to step four. They're not necessarily in this particular order but they're, they're sort of set out in order. So step one, if you give me a game object at some point when I'm thinking about drawing the thing I'm going to have to ask is this object visible within my viewport. So I've got an object that's somewhere in my game world. I've got a viewport, my window into the world. I need to work out, is this object visible? So I'm gonna have a test to see, can I see that object? Um, the answer to this will either be, no, you cannot see it. It falls completely outside the viewport. Yes, you can see it fully, it's fully within the viewport, or you can partially see it. A bit of it is within the viewport. So we'll have some code that does that. Step two, so we will be drawing bitmaps out to the screen. If we think about a bitmap, it's going to be loaded in. It will have a certain number of oh, pixels. Um, they actually define all of the values of that bitmap. We want to be able to take that bitmap and ultimately draw it onto the screen. So one of the things we're going to do is to work out how much of that bitmap we are drawing. If, if it's not visible on the screen, it's irrelevant. We're not drawing the thing, so we don't need to worry about it. If it's fully visible, then we want to draw all of that bitmap. So we will have what's known as a source rectangle, and that, that controls which bit of the bitmap we're going to be drawing. So if the object's fully visible, our source rectangle is the complete bitmap. Where we have a partially visible object, we will create a source rectangle that defines the region of the bitmap that we're going to draw out. And you can see an example here where we have uh, one of the miners, which is, is sort of partially visible on the screen. So we can work out how much of the game object is visible. And we'll then go to our bitmap and we will create a rectangle defined in terms of, of, of the size of the bitmap that defines the portion of the bitmap that we want to draw out. That's our source rectangle. So we'll have to have a piece of code that will calculate that. Step three then is that we, we know, um, so for something that is fully visible or partially visible, we know then that, okay, we have a bit of our world that is visible. We want to go to the screen for our screen viewport and work out which bit of the screen this corresponds to. So there we're doing a mapping from effectively layer space or game space onto screen space. Um, so that whilst you can see the example down here on the, on the left hand side where you have the builder partially or the miner partially visible, you want to work out, okay, what's the corresponding pixels on the screen that relate to this? If I were to take my game window, map it onto the screen and to define the region that it appears on the screen. So I will be building what's known as a destination rectangle. And this will be relative to the screen. So it will be expressed in terms of how many pixels across and how many pixels down we have to go to start and then how much we're actually drawing on the screen itself. So that means we have to build our destination rectangle. Uh, finally, the last thing we'll have to do then is basically we're going to draw, and at this point we've done all of our hard work, we will draw whatever is within our source rectangle onto the space defined by the destination rectangle. And in some cases that will involve expanding things out, in other cases it involves shrinking things down. It just depends upon how, how many pixels we have to be displayed and how many pixels on screen. Right, there are the different steps. A wee bit of complexity to that, but we'll have a look at the code. In fact, it'll be in the second part of the video we'll get down to looking at, at how the algorithm works in terms of the clipping and the mapping. Right, what we want to do first of all for this one is, is just to look at uh, gauge about how we we uh, use this. So let me just resize this window so we get it all in. 
Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the, um, the the windows that we have here. Now, if we go into uh, our engine um, and our world classes down here, so world classes, we, we said we have a screen manager. It contains a number of game screens. Game screens, at this point, they contain the different viewports. So we've got a layer viewport uh, and we've got a, a screen viewport over here. Um, we've got two classes, layer viewport and screen viewport, and we can have a look at these particular ones. Now, before we do that, let me just look at the default setup. So anytime we create a game screen, and we call the constructor for the game screen, uh, we, we're going to define these two, two default viewports, one for the screen, one for the layer. They are default, you can change them, you can have other ones and when we have a look at the demo we'll see that actually we can have many other viewports depending upon what you want to do uh, but the game screen constructor says okay create a new screen and a new layer viewport and we're going to be going to uh, it's known as the viewport helper class and in the second part of this video we'll have a look at what actually is contained inside that but it contains a method create default layer viewport and if I actually just go to the implement the implementation of this, um, this creates a by default it creates a 480 by 320 viewport, which is a 3-2 aspect ratio. So that's what you get by default. It assumes that your window into your game world is 480 game units across by 320 odd game units down. Uh, does that by default? It then goes to my viewport helper and it creates a three to two aspect ratio screen viewport. Um, I'm, I'm gonna look at how this method is implemented again in the second part. But in essence, this says, let me go to the device that I'm running on, which may be a three two aspect ratio or four three or 16 nine or whatever it is. But I'm gonna go to the actual screen and I, on the screen, I'm gonna calculate a three two screen uh, viewport. So that gives me, if you like, my notional layer and screen viewport by default. So I can draw whatever's here, I can draw it cleanly onto the screen because they're both 3-2 in terms of their aspect ratio. If you have a look just at these different classes then for layer viewport and screen viewport to see what they are, they're fairly simple. So anytime we create a layer viewport, uh, we're saying it has an X and a Y location. Anytime you see an XY location, you've got to say it's the location of what. In this case, it is the center point of the viewport. So we have our viewport centered on its XY location. It has a width and a height. Uh, in this sense, we're storing it's the half width and half height because that's quick then to add on to the center to get out to the sides. That's, in essence, all of the information that we need to define our, our layer viewport. It's a location and a size, nothing more than that. Uh, if we create one, we, we give it some default values as well if it's never specified. The reason for this is we don't particularly want these things to initialize all to zero because then if you forget to, to set up the values and it's all set to zero, nothing will appear on the screen even if the code's working fine. So we do give it some semi-sensible starting value. Or when you're specifying it, in most cases you call this one, you can specify the location and the size of it. You can also set the location and the size of it. This is relevant if you were, if, if you had your, your, your game and you're moving the viewport about or you're increasing the size or decreasing the size of the viewport. So for example, in some games, as you move, you want the viewport to track the player. Um, potentially, as you go faster, you want the viewport to zoom out so you get to see more of the surrounding. As you slow down, you want to zoom in. So by setting the values here, you can control the bit of the world that you get to see using the X and the Y, and you can control the amount of the world that you get to see using the width and the height. We can get the width, we can get the height, we can get the left and right hand side of the viewport, we can get the top and the bottom of the viewport. Now, they're just fair enough. Here are the two methods that you generally will call quite frequently, uh, and it's the reason we're using the half width. The first one is contains. So if I have um, an object, a point, a location, and I want to work out, is it inside my view, uh, layer viewport? I can call this method and pass in the location and it will tell me, true or false, is it inside that? 
uh, whenever we're looking at our game objects, we saw the game objects defined a bounding box. That, that's their position, their bound in the world. So if I have a, any game object with a bounding box, I can go to their viewport and I can say, well, do you contain this bound? In other words, is this game object partially visible within the um, actual uh, layer viewport itself? So this will return true if any part of the bounding box intersects with any part of the layer viewport. So, so that's it. That, that, that's all that class is. It's a very sort of simple container of a position, width and height, and a few utility methods. Screen viewport is is actually fairly similar, but it's, it's using the coordinate systems more typically associated with a screen. Um, so anytime, again, this ties in more to, to, to a rectangle, so you normally use rectangles for drawing it out. So in this sense, we have the left, we have the top, we have the right, we have the bottom. So, so we are defining those four different points that define um, the, the a rectangle on the screen, and that's going to be our screen viewport. Now, in most cases, most cases, yeah, probably most cases, the screen viewport is actually going to be sized to be equal to the complete size of the screen, or you want to make it as big as you can. If you had a side-by-side -side view inside your game, you might have two screen viewports, one for the left, one for the right, or for the top, or for the bottom. So, so you can define this for whatever portion or region of the screen you want to. We also give a width and a height. Uh, and, and we have our rectangle then, which is the, the thing we'll use internally for representing this. So uh, again, when you create a screen viewport, we'll give it some initial starting values just to get things going. Um, you can specify the left, right, top, and bottom yourself. And we calculate the width and height because we want to do. We don't want to keep calculating that in any of the equations. We can set it. Uh, we can get the center point if we want to, and sometimes that's relevant if we're trying to work out the distance that we are away from from the center of the screen. Uh, we can also ask: Does the screen viewport contain a particular uh, location? This can be useful if we have some touch-based input. And we have a different portion of the screen that we're, we're interested in asking, has a touch input happened over that? Uh, and we can also work out, does the, the, the screen viewport contain another rectangle? And we can, uh, again, convert this uh, to, to a rectangle itself if we need to get access to this, if we want to use our screen viewport, return to a rec, because Android uses a lot of rec in, the, in, in instances here. Right, so, so that's all that uh, that does. We've got our game screen that contains these. We've got a layer viewport and a screen viewport, which are these sort of simple representations. So let's uh, we'll run the viewport demo, and then we'll have a look at the code for seeing how it works. So viewport demo was in here under the viewport section. I'm going to click on this. Now, what we have visible on the screen here is um, you, you've got a world, and in this box in the top, you can notionally see the, the world. The world contains a number of squares randomly positioned. So these are game objects that whenever we draw on them, we're just drawing this uh, sort of uh, rocky style image. And what we effectively have, uh, you can see in the top right hand side, is, is the complete world. This is our game world, and we're having a visualization of the game world that contains all of these different objects. The darker colored box that is moving around within this, this is, if you like, our window into the world. So um, our layer viewport is actually visually represented here by that dark box as it moves around. And you can see as the layer viewport moves through our world, we um, identify and pick up on the different things that appear inside the layer viewport. So what we have here is this idea of a world that is bigger than what we can see at any point in time in terms of our game objects. We've got a window into it. That window can change. As it changes, we get to see different bits of the world. So that's fairly common. Uh, another example of this would be if I went back to my platformer. Again, in the platformer, I have, um, I randomly it, I have a range of different objects that are visible in the world as the player moves around. The, the different bits of the world becomes visible. So it's exactly the same notion of a bigger world where you have a certain window and that determines what is uh, displayed on the screen. 
Where the viewport demo is a little bit more sophisticated is other than having this window into the world, we've also got like our, our mini map, so to speak. So our mini map uh, sort of zooms things out and displays every object that's inside the world. So this, this is a very much an extractive view out. We're seeing the whole thing. Um, and we're only drawing the whole of our game world to a little region of the screen. So for this particular demo, we, we've got a number of different viewports and we want to go through and have a look at, at those in terms of the, the code. So let's do that. Uh, just to, to summarize this, uh, because th this is about probably as complicated as you're going to get. If you think to the demo you just saw, and you're trying to identify, well, what viewports are we going to have? There's actually a total of five viewports that we're going to use in this demo. There's two relative to the screen, and there are three which our game objects are associated with. Now, three is maybe more than you were anticipating, but we'll, we'll talk about that. If you look at the two on the screen, we're going to have one viewport for the screen, for, for the whole screen. And if I go back to my demo, I'll probably see it in the background. So I'm drawing here to the whole screen. Uh, so that's one of my viewports I want to define, something for the whole screen. I want to define a second viewport on the screen. So this is a second seven region on the screen that I'm drawing into, and it's going to be for my minimap. So what I have defined over here, the sort of light gray box and on the sort of the top right hand corner, that's going to be defined as another screen viewport. It's a bit of the screen that I want to draw to. So looking at the code, two screen viewports, one for the whole screen, one for a region into which I want to draw my minimap. Okay, so hopefully so far so good. Over on the the, the other side, uh, in terms of our game world, we're going to have three as mentioned. Two of them are, are, are somewhat more obvious. So the first one is, here I have my game world. I assume it's, it's a big virtual world, and inside my game world all of these different uh, objects live. So if I think about this in terms of what do I want to display in my mini-map? I want to display the complete world in my mini-map. So I will create one layer viewport for my mini-map, which is sized to be the complete game world. So effectively what I do there is I take the contents of the complete game world, it was shown here in the blue hashed, and I will be drawing it into the blue hashed screen viewport. So all of that contents gets to be compressed down and displayed in terms of the screen viewport. And that's what we have over here. We've got our whole world, these are all of the objects, and I'm zooming in and drawing them all in in that particular region of the screen. I also have then the bit that moves. So this is my, I'm calling it here my world view. So the green hashed one is the the small bit of the world where I'm looking into it, I'm seeing the objects in more detail, and that's the thing that's moving about. So as it moves about, some objects will become visible, some will become uh, go out of scope. But whatever falls inside the contents of this green layer viewport, I want to display on the screen's uh, green uh, hashed viewport. So effectively there I'm taking my small world view and I'm displaying it on the complete screen. So that gives me then the ability to, to have this sort of window into it. Uh, and that's what we see as it moves around. Uh, and what I'm actually doing is I'm visualizing the, the layer uh, the viewport for, for a world view on the mini map as well. Now, there's a third one. And the third one is a viewport in terms of the layers that holds my back button. So the button is down in the, the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. So this particular one here, I've, I've my world with my objects inside it, but I actually have a second layer on top of it, which is my control. I have a button down here. I need to go to the button location. I need to work out if I'm clicking on that button for me to go back to the previous one. So my final viewport, which I have, is, is a layer one because game objects live inside it. Um, I'm gonna call this my sort of HUD head-up display viewport. And inside this, I will display, in this sense, it's just the back button. 
if I had a score counter, health counter, things like this, I could define them within this sort of conceptual view. And what I'm doing here, so again, I've also shown this in the green hash at the bottom, whatever appears within this HUD viewport, I'm going to display within the, the whole screen screen viewport. So I, I'm sharing, I've got one whole screen viewport and I've got two different layer viewports that I'm drawing into that. So it means I can define my button down here and when I draw it, it will appear in the appropriate place on the screen. Okay, so that's, that's about as complex a thing as you would want to make it. But let's have a look at the code then to see how this uh, runs. So we will be going down into our demos, into our viewport demo screen. And we want to have a look at the implementation of this. It's a reasonably long class, but there's, there's good bits of it that we don't need to worry about. So we'll go through this here. In the next video, we'll, we'll, we'll look at some of the implementation in a bit more detail. For this particular one, we just want to get our head around from, a, if I'm using viewports, how do I do it? What does it look like? So my viewport demo is a type of game screen. Remember then that means that by default we get our, our default layer and screen viewport. So we have those two things out of the box. I've got my back button, which I'll be defining in the context of one layer space. I've got to give the, the size of my world because if I don't bound it, I can, I can create objects wherever I want. Um, so I'm saying here all objects will be within my 500 by 250. That's my notional size. Um, the game objects, I have to give them a width and a height. And, and, and ideally, okay, so if, if you were doing this in a proper game, normally you'd be creating a game object class itself. And that game object it will have its own width and height. Uh, but here, because I'm just creating a bunch of, beg pardon, squares on the screen, I, I'm just gonna say all of them are the same size. So this is just for a demo perspective. I have my uh, game object array. Uh, so I'm gonna create, in this sense, 100 uh, random game objects, uh, all sized to be 2020, positioned somewhere within my, my 500 by 250 world space. Okay, that, that's just my demo setup. Now, here's where I'm defining my additional viewport. So whilst I've got two default ones, and for simple screens, that's all you need. You need to have something you can draw to and then a look at a space you can define your, your entities within. Here, we're doing things a little bit more sophisticated. So I'm gonna define uh, my two layer viewports, one for the, the map, and this will be, uh, as go back to my previous slides here, the map one will be sized to be the complete size of the layer. And I will also define my game layer viewport. And that's, that's my window into this where I'm seeing the, the different blocks as they move around. For my screen viewport, now I have a couple of options here. I do actually get the default screen viewport. I could have reused that, um, but, but I'm not. I'm actually creating two completely different screen viewports. You don't have to use the default ones if you don't want to. So the two screen viewports, one to be the map screen viewport which will be the small region on the top right hand side of the screen. And then secondly, my game screen viewport, which is gonna be the complete screen that's available to me. Uh, and that gives me then the things I can draw from and the things I can draw into. Um, we have a little bit here about focused viewport width. So, so th this, is, this is one way of, of dealing with, with aspect ratios. I'm not assuming in, in terms of my uh, game viewports over here that it is a 3-2 aspect ratio. So if I'm running this on a 16-9, um, 16-10, on a, on a 4-3 device, I will use the complete available screen and I'm going to resize my layer viewport so it has the same aspect ratio as the screen that I'm running on. So that's an assumption. So here, I, I, you need to align these two things different ways. And either you say, I'm gonna fix aspect ratio of my layer viewport, and then create a screen one with the same aspect ratio. Or you say, I'm gonna look at the screen I'm running on, and I'll create a layer viewport with that same aspect ratio. It is important to link up the aspect ratios, because if you don't, what is squares at the minute would be drawn as rectangles. It would be squished or extended, depending on, on the mapping. So we assume that the, the viewport width, the one that was zoomed in looking at the world, is 100 wide, 
The height of it, we don't know, because we will calculate a height based on the actual aspect ratio of the screen. If it was a something like a 4.3, then we would take, you know, be 100 by something like 75 or 66, and depending on which way you want to do it around. Uh, we have a map scale, um, so so this this also defines the size of the map that's drawn. So we, we can we can make this bigger or smaller. So at the minute it's forty percent of the screen that we, we draw or mini map into. I can say this at ten if I wanted a really really small one. Now the you'll, you'll notice when we're running this demo, it, it sort of moves about at at random and sort of quite smoothly varies as we go across. Uh, what we're doing there is is we're simply simply creating a target. Uh, and we'll, we'll look at this when we get onto the steering demos. But we're simply creating a target and we'll chase after that target using steering algorithms. Whenever we get close enough to it, we'll regenerate a new target. So I'm not going to cover it in this talk because we'll look at later on when we look at steering. So the things that we do here with seeking and seeking target are, are more steering behaviors. We create our, our demo screen. We create our ubiquitous back button. Uh, and we give it a, a position. You can see here it's relative to our default layer viewport. Um, so I'm, I'm defining things here. We get our default layer viewport by default, that's hence the name. And I'm going to create it there, sort of 95 across and, and 10 up from the bottom in terms of the percentage of it. And I give it a size relative to the size of it. So I know it's going to appear sort of uh, right hand side up a little bit and it's going to be reasonably small size. Uh, and I should say, this is a nice thing about this then. So in terms of creating the, the back button, if I specify its location and its size relative to my default layer viewport, I, I know how big that is. Uh, and I know then I can have consistency throughout this here. So if I'm running on different devices, I'll be able to map onto the equivalent area on those devices. A bit about screen width and screen height. Uh, and then this ties into uh, calculating the different uh, viewports. So first one is is the map layer viewport. So this is the, the, the complete viewport that we have for our game world. So we want to display all of the game world onto the screen. So if I think about this in terms of a layer viewport, it is, it is the complete world. So that's what I do. I say I'm going to position it in the middle of the world and it's half width and half height or half the width of the world and half the height of the world. So that basically is sized to be the same size as my complete world. That's it. We have a little bit here when we're calculating the layer viewport um, because we need to work out an aspect ratio for it. So over here, I've calculated the screen width and the screen height. So I know physically, uh, or in terms of pixels, just the actual density of the screen, the device I'm running on. Down here, I calculate the aspect ratio. I say, okay, is it 4, 3, 16, 9, 16, 10? So this is the actual aspect ratio of the device I'm running on, and that can change depending upon the devices. But each time we run this, we'll work it out. So I'm saying I want to get a new layer viewport. This is my small window into the world. I'm, I'm initially positioning it in the middle of the world. So it starts off my viewport right bang in the middle. I am saying it will have this fixed width, focus viewport width. I defined that above. So the width is definitely going to be 100. Now, why is 100 relevant? Because I said it's 100 here, and my game world is 500 across. So it's going to be one fifth of the complete width of the world. Uh, and any time, again, I run this here, I, I know it's going to be one fifth, fifth of my complete world. So this sets it up to be that fixed width. I don't actually know the height. I have to calculate the height because depending on the device that I'm running it, and the aspect ratio of that device, that the height will differ. So I say, okay, I'm simply going to take my default width and I'm going to scale you by the aspect ratio. Um, so it will work it out. If it's 100 and we've got 4, 3, then we will then put it down to 75. So this calculates um, the, the, the game layer so that it will map onto the screen with the correct aspect ratio. So far so good. Uh, now what we do, we're going to do a little bit about creating up the, the screen viewports. Uh, so we have two that we want to create. The first one is the map screen viewport. So that's the little window inside which we display our complete world. So over here we are 
Um, we're doing a little bit in terms of the map scale. So we said this at the minute, was it set to 0.2? Oh, sorry, 0.4. So our, our mini map over here will be 40% of the, the, the screen size in terms of width and height. Um, so down here we say, okay, we know how big our screen is. We know what scaling we want to apply to it. Uh, and we can calculate then what the actual width and height of it is in terms of our pixel values. So we are creating our new screen um, uh, viewport based on, on the map scale that we said. We'll define that region so that if we want 40%, then we will take the top right 40% of the screen. And that defines our screen region. For the game screen, so this is the, the one that we're displaying, if you like, the, the big view of the world onto. We want it to be the size of the full screen. So it's from 0, 0 to screen width and screen height. So it basically says, give me the complete available screen because I want to draw to that. And at that point, we've, we've done our setup. We've created our two layer viewports. We're going to use the default one for positioning our back button. We've created two screen viewports, one for the whole screen, one for our mini map region that we want to draw to. And that's the setup. The rest of it here, I'm going to go through very quickly. We load in um, an image. We randomly go through and create these 100 objects in this case and, and position them at random locations in our world. We do a little bit of setup for um, our, our, our seeker is using the steering algorithms, which will chase around and give it accelerations and things like that. They're somewhat irrelevant to, to our, our talk here in viewports. Update then. So um, update it, it is actually going to be very, very simple. Uh, the one thing we have to do, if, if we think about running the thing here, so the screen, the, the game viewport will be changing as it moves through the world. Um, and we're going to be, in this sense, chase or mapping onto our, our hidden seeker object as it zooms around the world. So certainly when we're updating things, we'll want to change the position of our um, game viewport. But that's about it. We don't need to change the, the minimap because we're drawing it's still the same, the whole world onto the screen. Uh, and the rest of the ones when we're using the viewports will come into the draw methods. So update actually should have quite little uh, in terms of viewport related activity. Usual stuff, we check to see is the back button being pressed. If so, we go back. We will uh, update our, so we're using seek, so we're going to chase after a certain hidden target and we'll get our seeker to do that chasing and if need be, if we've reached or are approximating our, our, our target, we'll create a new target. So that, that keeps the thing moving around. Here's the relevant bit. So I suppose in most games, the, the equivalent thing to this seeker is that you would have the player. And as the player moves about the world, you want the viewport to follow the player, to, to, to move as the player moves about the world. Um, the bit we have down here say, basically says, OK, this is the thing that the viewport's looking at. In this sense, or seeker, or it could be the player. But let's go to the, in this case, the seeker, get its X and Y position, and we will center the viewport on that particular position. So as the seeker moves, our viewport keeps them firmly looking at them. And that means then we move the viewport through the world so we're getting to see a different bit of the world. So that's good, that changes our viewport. We do have a little bit of, of, of a sort of targeting to do here. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to easily see this, it depends on the demo. You will notice that um, Sometimes it will generate a target, which, which may, there it goes. So it's now touching against the bottom of the screen. You'll notice here that as this moves around, and as you can do the demo yourself, it won't actually leave the confines of the screen. Now, the thing about steering algorithms is that steering algorithms has a velocity. It is actually quite commonly going to try to push it out of the bounds of the screen, just depending where it's chasing. So we have a bit of logic that we put in here that make sure that if our seeker is moving and we then update our game point to look directly at the seeker, we do a final check to make sure, okay, make sure our, our viewport still is within our world. We haven't tried to look at something where the seeker's right at the edge, where our viewport then is looking outside of the world. 
Um, so we've got a check here that verifies or, or, or repositions the viewport so it always keeps the, 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 what we're seeing within the views of the, the region of the world. Uh, so what we do there is that we get, in this sense, the left-hand side of our viewport. So if you think about our viewport, back to our demo, as this is moving around this grey scales, it'll have an, a location for the left-hand side, an X location. And if this X location ever gets less than zero, so this would be an analogous to, to the player being over close to the left-hand side, so if we had the viewport centered there, we'd be trying to look at a bit outside of it. Um, so if it's ever less than zero, we want to correct it. We want to say, actually change the, the viewport, shunt it across so the left-hand side is precisely at zero. So we don't see outside of the world. We do a small bit of logic here that if we are actually pushing outside of the world, we create a new target to try to drag it away from the side. Likewise, we do the same with the right-hand side. If the right-hand side of the viewport tries to go beyond the right-hand side of the world, we restrict it so it can't see. We actually bump it back and we create a new target. Ditto with the top uh, and, and the bottom of it. So this just makes sure that our viewport is always confined within the world. So we have that little bit of logic anytime we update it. Uh, create a new target, don't need to worry about um, because it ties into the steering. If we're drawing things out, We've actually done all of the hard work. We've we have defined our viewports. Uh, it's probably the most difficult bit. We've updated them and we've made sure they're still valid. Uh, for drawing out then, all we've got to say is draw things out and use the particular viewports that we've created. In the second video, we'll have a look at the code in terms of how it does the clipping and the mapping and things like that. We're not going to look at it in this video. So we're going to draw, we're going to clear the screen. Um, this is it. So. We, there's different things we need to draw out. We're going to draw out our platforms first of all. So these are the 100 platforms. So what you want to think at this point is, okay, what am I drawing out and to, to where? So in this sense, I'm drawing out each platform. I'm saying, I want you to draw yourself out relative to the game layer viewport. So that, that's, that's the, the version where we want to get to see a little bit of the world. Now, for most of those 100 objects, um, you don't actually get to see them on this, other than the minimap. If you ignore the minimap, most of the 100 objects are actually not visible in my game layer viewport. So this actually is quite inefficient. Good. We will go through all 100. We will draw it out relative to the game layer viewport. And in most cases, next talk we'll have a look at the code. In most cases, it'll go, well, you're not visible, so I'm not going to draw anything out. Um, so this could be written a bit more efficiently and again things like scene graphs where you can work out more accurately what's likely to be visible. Uh, where are we drawing it to? We're drawing it to the game screen viewport, which is the big one on the screen. So it will draw out the 100 uh, objects, rectangles, in nice good detail. That's what we see. Uh, we're then uh, going to do a little bit about drawing out our, our mini-map. So here I, I set into light grey and I'm drawing a rectangle on the screen in, in that sort of light tray with a transparent background. Doing this here just to visually indicate where the, the mini-map uh, screen uh, viewport is, because otherwise it's not there, it's not visible. But that, that highlights it. Um, I'm also going to do a second bit here drawn out in dark grey, which visualizes the location relative to the world of the, the game layer uh, um, viewport. So you can see the calculation, it works it out. So th these two rectangles that are colored rectangles are drawn on the screen, they're simply drawn to, to visualize the fact that this is the mini map and this is the bit of the world that you're seeing. The second thing we then do, so we've already drawn out our 100 platforms relative to our game layer. We're then going to draw out the 100 platforms again this time relative to our mini-map, to our map layer view. And you can see here it's from the map layer viewport, so we get to see every single one of the 100. And we're not drawing onto the full screen, we're drawing onto the map screen viewport, which is the little region at the top. So you can get into efficiencies, and if you're doing mini-maps, you need to be careful about what you draw and, and, and the cost of doing things. But this effectively means our objects have to be drawn out again. Um, for drawing out the 
mini versions of them, or the, or the versions that are drawn smaller on the screen. Um, finally then, the last thing we have to do is draw our back button, because we don't really have any other HUD uh, controls in this particular instance. So we want to draw our back button. Now, back to these slides here. We, we can't use our, our layer viewport here for our world view, because if I give this a position, I've got to give my button, my back button, a certain position. And if I try to position it in terms of the game world, so remember my game world was, what, 500 by 250. Where do I position my back button? Do I say it's down here, uh, so, you know, a couple of hundred across, a couple of hundred up? Do I say it's in the far bottom right-hand corner of my game world? The problem is if I specify my, my back button in terms of my game world, I run the risk of the thing not being visible within my world uh, viewport. Uh, as the, so as this moves around, maybe I'll see the back button, maybe I won't see the back button. So that's why over here when I'm drawing out the back button, uh, I want to play it safe. I want to make sure that I have the back button, I'm using the default layer viewport, which is my 3-2 my aspect ratio, and I'm just drawing that onto the screen, the, the default screen viewport, which again is a 3-2 screen aspect ratio. So this this gives me, a, if you like, a, sef, a second way of looking at things and I can make sure I know then that yes, I can specify location here, it'll always be visible, and I know I'm drawing onto 3-2 on the screen, it's going to have the right aspect ratio as well. So that draws it out perfectly fine. Right, so I try to summarize all of this then. Um, we looked at quite a lot here. Uh, this is only part one. Part two, we're going to get into some of the more implementational details of it. But key summary at this point, viewports are actually important uh, for two reasons. The first one is that they give us a, a window into a bigger world. Not all games need that window into a bigger world, but quite a lot of them do. The second reason we need viewports is simply to deal with the, the variety of screens that we have available different aspect ratios, different pixel densities, and from mapping from one viewport onto another, it gives us a way of, of having a standardized view of our of game objects, where they're located, their size, and then at runtime, dynamically mapping them onto the actual uh, device that we are using. So as mentioned, this is the end of the first part. In the second part, we'll have a look at how we get input and deal with touch-based input, again, mapping onto a game object location, and then look at some of the the algorithms that we use to do the, the clipping uh, and, and the setup.